an atonement is necessary because it is impossible for an offender by his future good conduct to repair the errors of the past or to accumulate so much merit as to be a compensation or an offset for his former sins. There can be no doubt that men often secretly rely on this. The case is similar to what would occur in a child who had been disobedient and who hoped to make amends for his fault by his future good conduct, or of one who had a task assigned to him and who had neglected it, and who hoped to make up for it by an additional amount of extra service, or of an officer in an army who had been cowardly or had neglected his duty and who should endeavor to compensate for it by some extraordinary and uncommended vigilance or deed of valor, or of a servant who had omitted to do what was required of him, and who expected by labor performed at hours when his service was not wanted, to make up for his idleness or neglect. In these cases, the idea would be that there would be such an accumulation of merit, or that there would be so much service performed beyond what was required, that it could be set over to the credit of the past as if it had been performed then, that is, that as much service has been rendered on the whole as if there had been a faithful performance of duty at the time when it was required. The question now is, not whether there may not be a case of this kind in regard to service demanded in the performance of a task where the same amount of profit on the whole would accrue to the employer but whether compensation can be made in that way for crime can this be the ground of hope towards God in reference to this the following remarks may be made 1. It seems to be a clear principle that in reference to morals no man can do more than he is at present bound to do. We may indeed conceive that a servant who has a task assigned him for the day may have performed the task and may still have unoccupied time in which he might render a service that was not specified in the contract and which might therefore be set over to the account of a former deficiency. If such a deficiency had occurred from sickness or from any other cause. But no such case is conceivable in regards to morals. At no one time can any man be more honest, true, just, just, benevolent than he ought to be at that time. At no one time can a child be more obedient to his father, can a husband be more faithful towards his wife, can a parent be more just in his dealing towards his children or strive more to promote their real welfare than at the very time he ought to be. And no one time can a man love God more than he ought at th that very time, for the command is binding on him at that supposed time in the same sense in which it has always been. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. Mark 7 verse 30 It is impossible therefore that in any such service there can be a work of supererogation or that there can be a service rendered which is not demanded at that time and which can be set over to the credit of a best deficient account. Or in other words that there can be any time not covered by an immediate command of God which can be employed in rendering a service that shall compensate for a former waste of time or for a former neglect of duty. And as these remarks apply to men now, so they, for the same reason, apply to men of all times, to the saints of former generations as well as to the saints now. If he supposed service of the saints of other ages in extraordinary fastings, prayers, pilgrimages, toils, labors, self-sacrifices were meritorious at all, 
they were meritorious only as demanded by the law of God at that very time, for the law of God must always be the rule of that which is truly virtuous. It follows, therefore, that they could not at any time perform a service which was not demanded then and which could be set over to a deficiency of former merit in their own lives, or which could be garnered up to be made available under this bursting power of a priesthood to supply the deficiency of men in future ages. The only being who ever could place himself in such a position that his obedience to the law could be made available to supply the deficiencies of others is he who was not bound to obedience from the fact that he was himself the lawgiver and who could therefore so place himself in a condition of voluntary obedience that his merits could become available for others. This is a Christian idea of redemption, and in this respect the Christian scheme differs from all others in regard to a work of superorgation or of extraordinary merits. Second, it is equally clear that any future obedience on the part of one who has violated law and who has incurred its penalty does not affect the past. The past is fixed and cannot be changed. All historical facts become unchangeable and must remain just as they occurred forever. A crime might be forgiven or forgotten, but it cannot be changed. The individual who committed it may change, for he may become an eminently good and useful man, but that does not in the slightest degree modify the fact in regard to the crime. That remains just as it occurred, more enduring in the nature of things than any record of brass could make it, than if it were printed in a book or graven with an iron pen and lead in the rock. The act of murder was committed. No future good conduct can obliterate or modify that fact. The slanderous words have been uttered. No future act of kindness can change or modify that fact. The act of seduction has been perpetrated. There is no power in heaven or on earth that can make that cease to be an historical fact. There it is, and there it will remain forever. No amount of future good conduct can summon the murdered man from the grave, call back the slanderous word, restore innocence to the seduced, or obliterate the act of injustice, oppression, and fraud. The sin of Judas is fixed forever. The crimes of Tiberius, Nero, Alexander the Sixth, Kaiser Borgia, Richard the Third, Philip the Second, and the Duke of Alva are historical facts never to be blotted out from the records of the universe. Third, in any case, even where there may seem to be a restitution or a compensation for the sins of the past, it is of a very partial and imperfect nature. A young man who is idle and dissipated may, indeed by subsequent industry and virtue, do much to gain an elevated and honorable position in life, and may seem to make up for the follies of his early years. But it is seeming only there are two things which he cannot do. A. He cannot by any subsequent good conduct change the fact that he was idle and dissipated. B. He cannot gain the position which he might have secured if he had not been idle and dissipated. There was nothing in that course of life which was in any way preparatory to subsequent elevation, and whatever diligence he may manifest in future life, or whatever virtue he may possess, the time spent in idleness and dissipation was at least so much time absolutely lost in the sum total of his existence. It contributed nothing to what he ultimately became. It took away much that might have contributed to place him on a higher elevation than he ultimately secured. He fell off in the early part of the race, and no subsequent exertions can supply the deficiency or put him as far on the course as if he had not fallen back in the beginning. 
perchance in her long life he can barely reach the point at which he might have begun actual life if his early years had been spent in the ways of industry and virtue.